So at this point, I'm going to actually select all of my keyboard tracks. I'm going to right click and we're going to select add bus for selected channels. So what I'm doing here is adding a bus that all of my keyboard channels will go through. So we'll label this easy keys bus. If we solo it, it's going to basically solo and play all of my instances of easy keys. So that gives me some additional mix control, but really the reason I want to do it is because I want to add in another Easy Mix plugin. We're gonna go to the Easy Mix One library, go to compressors, and I'm gonna grab this compressor two. It's a very simple compressor. I'm gonna leave it in its default state. And the reason for this is now that we have three different keyboard parts, I'd like to just glue them together with a little bit of compression. Very subtle change. You're not necessarily going to hear it. You'd really have to listen for it, but I just wanted to glue those tracks together with a little bit of compression. Now at this point, I want to add a little bit more movement within our song as well. So we have our three different keyboard parts. And I'm gonna reorder these tracks just a little bit. We're gonna put the drums at the top. We'll put bass second. And then we have our three keyboard tracks here. We're not really gonna do anything with this main MK1 chorus, but what I'd like to do for the second and third instance of Easy Keys is bring the MIDI into the actual track within Studio One. So I've already exported the Easy Keys MIDI from before. I'm just gonna bring that in. We'll drag it into both of these new Easy Keys tracks. Let me go to the very beginning. I just wanna make sure everything is lined up correctly and it is. And then what I need to do is actually go into the second and third instance of the plugin and we're going to turn follow host off because we don't want duplicated audio. I do want follow host on in my main instance of Easy Keys because that is still playing using the MIDI within the song track of the actual plugin. Now the reason I'm doing this is I want to go through, use this outline of my song, and I'm going to take out different portions of these second and third instances of easy keys. That way, in different parts of the song, you may have just the original keyboard part, or you may have this MK1 chorus and the soft ballad, or the MK1 chorus and the electric 200A. And then toward the end, I want all three of them in there. So there's actually a little bit of movement. The song builds a little bit. It's a very subtle tactic, but it is effective in just having a little bit of change between each section of the song. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of chop these up a little bit. And I can do this in Studio One. I can just line up my cursor and make sure Snap is enabled. I can line up my cursor with each of these sections. And if I hold the Command key on a Mac, it will do a cut. So I'm just gonna make some cuts at every section of the song. And that's why getting this song outline using the arrangement track or the Ranger track in Studio One is very helpful. because so I can do this very quickly. So for the intro, I do want this soft ballad to play, but not the Electra 200A. So there is something in addition to our main keyboard track going on in the intro. During the first verse, I actually don't want either of them. I want it to really break down and be very simplified. For the first chorus, we will use just the soft ballad once again. For verse two, I want it to build a little bit, so we're gonna use the electric 200A. And then, of course, for the chorus, we're gonna go back to using just the soft ballad. For the bridge, we're gonna use the soft ballad once again. And then once the chorus comes in, I actually do want both the second and third instance, so the soft ballad and the electric 200A, to be playing, because I want that third chorus to really be the biggest part of the song. And I'm actually gonna leave the parts all the way into the outro, because even though the outro breaks down, I like those additional layers. I think it adds to the sound of the keyboard part. And it breaks down enough that it's not going to get in the way. So I'll go ahead and play this. I'll jump around a bit so you can just hear what that does to the sound. And it's a subtle difference, a subtle change, but it actually does make a difference. It gives the track a little bit of movement and it makes it so the keyboard track isn't so static as far as it just being one sound the entire time. Now we're adding some layers at different times within the song and it kind of builds to the end.
So we're gonna run with that for the keyboard part. We added some additional instances, some different sounds. We didn't change the MIDI at all. All we did was create additional easy keys tracks, use the exact same MIDI, change the sounds a bit, and then just decided where to put those additional layers of easy keys.